it's, it's really interesting that, um, and this was again manganese, so the quote was about manganese and how manganese is what uh, glyphosate gets at to cause toxicity in the soil, which disrupts the soil bacteria, allows the pathogens to overgrow. And then exactly the same thing happens in the gut, again with the manganese, the same problem. So you have a kind of a, um, a unified theory. I think there's even a cloud bacterial effect, uh, and I haven't studied this enough, but I know there are bacteria that grow in the clouds, and they probably also uh, are important for managing the weather. And I know we've had crazy, crazy weather lately, and I suspect that it's possible that glyphosate plays a role in that because it could be getting, in, and it's definitely in the rain. I mean, so there was a recent study that showed 80, I think 86% of the rain samples uh, in this area that was studied, I think it was in Kentucky, um, had glyphosate present in the rain. So it's obviously getting into the sky and getting into the clouds, it's going to damage the cloud bacteria. So you've got the soil, the clouds, and the gut all disrupted by the glyphosate and causing an enormous issue across the board on the earth. Yes, well, it, it actually prevents the uptake into the roots, and then it especially prevents the uptake into the uh, leaves. So you, studies have shown uh, depletion, for example, of iron, zinc, um, magnesium, uh, and of course we mentioned cobalt and manganese, um, and probably molybdenum as well. I mean, basically all of these minerals are going to be affected, and so the plant is going to become depleted. It doesn't take up, it take up these minerals into the roots, and therefore doesn't get into the um, product from the plant, and so our food is deficient in these minerals as a consequence. And the feed that's given to the animals is also deficient, so the animals are deficient. And of course they're getting really sick. I mean, there's a lot of studies going on right now particularly with uh, pigs. The, the, the hogs are really hurting uh, in both in America and in Europe. And I just read an article this morning, which was, was fantastic, because it was saying farmers, uh, both in Europe and in America, are discovering that if they go back to non-GMO, not organic, but just non-GMO uh, corn and soy uh, feed for their uh, hogs, they improve their health so much that they save money by doing that. Um, and it's because the GMO is allowing the glyphosate to get into the, into the food, much more so than the, uh, the non-GMO, even when glyphosate's being used to manage the weeds. It's amazing. I mean, this was something that I actually discovered after Anthony Sampson and I wrote our first paper, where we did a big analysis and had all these modern conditions and diseases that we could explain on the basis of glyphosate. Autism was one of them, also obesity and Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. I mean, there's a big list um, of diseases. So I, as after um, I had already written this paper, that I got contacted by a person named Nancy Swanson. Who, had, uh, who has published an amazing uh, number of, of plots of uh, correlations between glyphosate usage on corn and soy on the one hand and a whole bunch of different modern diseases. And I'm going to give you a list of some of them because it's amazing. Autism, very definitely, Alzheimer's disease, thyroid cancer, um, pancreatic cancer, um, obesity, uh, even, even uh, LDL, like high cholesterol. And... Um, Gut, of course, gut disorders, you know, uh, inflammatory gut, or celiac disease, um, kidney failure, um, the list goes on and on, Parkinson's disease, all of these things are uh, anxiety, all of them are going up in step with glyphosate usage on corn and soy. The, uh, the autism is absolutely amazing because what we did is we plotted, Nancy and I sort of worked this out, look at the previous four years of glyphosate usage on corn and soy, integrate over the previous four years, and then look at the number of autistic kids in first grade in the school system. So the school system uh, evaluates for autism and puts them on a special program in the public schools. So you can get those numbers from the, from the web, it's from the US government. If you look at those two plots, this is looking at a six-year-old child's, an estimate of their exposure from the age of two to the age of six is the glyphosate plot. And the other plot is the number of kids in first grade that have autism. You put those two plots on top of each other, they coincide. 0.997 Pearson correlation coefficient, looking over the past, over the 10 years from 1990 to 2010. Absolutely unbelievable. 0.997, you never see such a strong correlation coefficient. 1.0 is the highest it can ever be. And I find that just absolutely stunning. I mean, to me, that is really the, the home run to say, I already had figured out glyphosate is causing autism. And then to see that kind of correlation was very satisfying from the standpoint of uh, just um, validating, validating the studies. Let's uh, expand.
using the VARS database. VARS is the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System. And um, that was one of the first things I started to look into when I was trying to figure out autism. I mean, I know that the autism parents talk a lot about the vaccine caused my child's autism. And of course, the government is saying, no, no, that's not true. It's absolutely not true. We've proven it in the papers. If you look at the papers that are saying it's not true, they're weak. They're not legitimate. And whereas there's plenty of papers talking about the aluminum and the mercury in the vaccines um, showing causative effects from the biology. So I think they're absolutely right. The glyphosate makes the um, aluminum much more toxic than it would otherwise be. So this paper, I wrote it before I knew anything about glyphosate. I looked at the VARS database. And I did a lot of interesting uh, statistical analyses of words within the reports to show interesting linkages between symptoms that are associated with autism, symptoms that are associated with preeclampsia in the mother, and then symptoms, symptoms that are associated with um, anemia. So you sort of mix these. You can pull, pull things different ways, different threads. And you can read the paper. And all the details are there. But you see all these correlations that link these things together. And it turns out preeclampsia, which is an effect in pregnancy, which is associated with anemia, um, and which can also lead to uh, encephalitis in the mother. And of course, I think autism is a low-grade encephalitic uh, encephalitis in the child. So this is all connecting up between the mother and the child having sort of the same condition, and the mother sort of uh, pr pr producing an environment in the womb that is conducive towards the autism uh, phenotype. And um, so it's fascinating, all these things linked up together. And of course, the cobalamin is cobalt, which is the mineral that glyphosate depletes. And that's the B12 that causes this pernicious anemia. So everything links up. And also, uh, preeclampsia is a very strong prediction for autism in the offspring. So all of this connects together very, very nicely with a very scary situation of uh, producing autism because of this cobalamin deficiency in the mother. Glyphosate and the aluminum are very uh, toxic together. And, um, and I've written about that in various papers. I'm still writing about that in future papers as well. Um, fascinating, because the, for, there's many different ways in which glyphosate makes aluminum more toxic. And, um, and it causes the aluminum to accumulate in the brain instead of being flushed out through the urine. And um, it's, for example, the chelation. And glyphosate puts cage around the aluminum. So if you get the aluminum in the vaccine, it gets into your blood, and there's glyphosate in your blood, the glyphosate will put the cage around the aluminum so that it can't be disposed of. And then it will carry the aluminum to the terminal watershed. And one of those places it'll carry it to is the pineal gland in the brain. And so that's going to then, just like uh, a glyphosate delivers arsenic to the kidneys to produce kidney failure, glyphosate can deliver aluminum to the pineal gland to uh, create uh, damage to the pineal gland. And that's going to cause a disrupted sleep because the pineal gland produces melatonin, uh, which regulates sleep. Melatonin is um, produced by products of the shikimate pathway, which glyphosate disrupts. So you're going to have a melatonin deficiency problem anyway because of the glyphosate. On top of damage to the pineal gland from the aluminum and from the glyphosate, who, which are delivered to the pineal gland together through this chelation process. So that's very nasty. Glyphosate also. Uh, causes the overgrowth of C. difficile, which produces a product called P. cresol. P. cresol enhances the uptake of aluminum by cells. And P. cresol has been shown uh, to be present in association with autism in the urine. And a study on mice showed a remarkable correlation between uh, the production of something that's very, very similar to P. cresol, um, which is called 4-EPS. It's ethyl instead of methyl, but otherwise exactly the same as P. cresol. This thing was increased 47 times in the 47 fold in the blood in these mice that had been engineered to have autism. Um, so there's lots of connections there with the uh, aluminum and the glyphosate and the picresol and um, increased toxicity of the aluminum because of the glyphosate. Uh, so a study that looked at the brain. Um, looked at different regions of the brain and measured uh, post-mortem, of course, and measured um, how much aluminum had accumulated. And it found more than twice as much aluminum in the pineal gland compared to any other parts of the brain. So clearly, if there is aluminum uh, in the brain, it's going to preferentially accumulate in the pineal gland. And of course, sleep disorder is associated with all kinds of neurological conditions, autism, Alzheimer's, depression, multiple sclerosis, um, Parkinson's disease. All of these are associated with sleep disorder. So I think the pineal gland is especially vulnerable to um, damage from uh, aluminum and probably other toxic metals as well. 
uh, probably manganese as well, interestingly enough, because glyphosate is going to do the same thing with manganese, carry it in a shield, not allow any of the cells to get at it, who could use it productively to, to activate enzymes, instead deliver it to the pineal gland and to the general brainstem nuclei to cause damage there. So it's really um, interesting how it can cause the manganese to get redistributed such that it's toxic in certain areas of the body, it's too much. And then in other parts, there's a deficiency. So that's, it does that with all the minerals. It messes up the homeostasis so that it's in the wrong place and, and gets over-concentrated and dangerous in its parts. So you can have both deficiency and toxicity at the same time because of the way glyphosate uh, disrupts the management of these minerals. Really, really important. That's what I'm learning all about the, how the body manages minerals and how that gets disrupted by something like glyphosate. I mean, all of these things are impacted by, uh, by the glyphosate. Thyroid hormone, for example, is produced from the shikimate pathway. You know, it's really ironic that Monsanto says, oh, we don't have that pathway, so we don't need to worry. The fact is, because we don't have that pathway, we can't make the products of that pathway. That's the pathway that glyphosate disrupts in the plants, the shikimate pathway. And it is a precursor to thyroid hormone, dopamine, serotonin, melatonin, melanin, which is the tanning in your skin, um, vitamin E, um, Folate, you know, vitamin B6. So all these, uh, all these are going to become deficient uh, because of the lack of the products of the shikimate pathway because the microbes are producing that for you as precursors to these really, really important molecules in your body. So the thyroid hormone deficiency plus the dopamine problem because dopamine comes from the shikimate pathway. When dopamine is deficient, then the body sends out signals to produce more thyroid hormone the thyroid gland becomes very stressed because it doesn't have enough raw materials to make the thyroid hormone. It's being told, make more, make more. So it gets inflamed, I mean, it gets damaged, and then you can end up with thyroid cancer, which is very highly correlated with glyphosate usage on corn and soy. And also, a pre thyroid is a predictor, thyroid disruption, uh, hypothyroidism in the mother is a predictor of autism in the child. So again, this all connects up. See, the joints have, uh, depend very critically on chondroitin sulfate for their health. And, um, and, of course, people are having terrible problems with their joints these days. Um, and also with their bones. I mean, I, the, uh, the, all of the bone system and the joints depends upon chondroitin sulfate. And chondroitin sulfate depends upon manganese to be produced. I talked about it earlier with the um, starfish and with the coral. They also produce chondroitin sulfate, and they also get disrupted when they don't have enough manganese. So... Uh, I think the body, we're having a huge problem also with um, people have osteomalacia, which is sort of soft bones in the elderly these days. Old people are, are getting very, a lot of injuries having to do with a, a fall. They're, they're weak. They're too weak. They fall. They break a bone. I mean, everything is very, their skeleton is in really bad shape, and they're very fragile. And, they're, and we're having a huge issue with, um, with health care costs going up because of these elderly people becoming sometimes so physically disabled because of some breaking a hip or something like that, they can really go downhill. And I think that's all because of this, uh, in, in part because of this lack of manganese, uh, because of the glyphosate chelation problem that's causing them to have unhealthy bones and unhealthy joints. I think that it's a shame that we've become afraid of the sun. We've been taught to use sunscreen if we go outside or to avoid the sun. This is the wrong message, and, it, and I think we have an enormous problem with vitamin D deficiency in our country today. In part, maybe in large part, that's because glyphosate disrupts the enzymes in the liver that activate vitamin D. And I didn't get into this whole issue of, the, um, of this disruption of the enzymes. It's a very important part of what glyphosate does. It uh, disrupts these enzymes called type enzymes, and they're really uh, important in the liver. And one of the things they do is to activate the vitamin D. They also produce the bile acids, which are very, very important for digesting fats, as well as for regulating the minerals. So that gets messed up. And then also the, these enzymes are used to detoxify other toxic chemicals. So uh, they become more toxic. So that has a huge effect. Uh, and of course, liver disease is a huge issue that's growing in this country. Fatty liver, uh, cirrhosis, all of these are going up in step with glyphosate usage on corn and soy. I think it's wonderful that today in America you can go to Whole Foods and you can buy organic foods and 
my husband and I have a policy now of buying only organic, and we, and we have fun with it. We'll, we'll say, oh, well, can we make this? And we'll see the ingredients, and we'll go and see if we can find every one of those ingredients organically. And if we can't, we won't make it. So we're having to make choices about what we eat on the basis of can we find it organic. I've given up, for example, on um, yogurt. I used to really love yogurt, and I require high-fat yogurt, full-fat yogurt. I won't eat yogurt that's not full-fat. So when you say full-fat plus organic, is very hard to find. Um, but for the most part, I've been able, we've been able to find the foods that we enjoy organically at Whole Foods. And of course, we also go to farmer's markets and we always ask, is it organic? And they'll say, well, this is organic, that's not. Okay, we'll take this. So we're very, very careful. We drink organic beer, organic wine. I mean, we're, we, have, we buy organic spices. So we walk the walk, my husband and I. And um, we talk to everybody we know. We say, you got to go organic. I mean, that is really the very simple, straightforward answer. And fortunately, at least where I live, you can do it. Now, I don't know if it's true in all parts of the country. I live in Boston, so there's a lot of resources. Organic is growing, 13% uh, last year growth in organic, which is a really good sign. And I actually think we can, I don't have a lot of faith in the government because the government is extremely wedded to the whole GMO, uh, toxic chemical approach to farming, which I think is extremely um, distressing for me. I mean, they're actually subsidizing the very crops that are causing us to be sick. All the uh, processed foods, the f crops that go into the processed food industry that are based on the GMO Roundup Ready scheme are, are what's being subsidized. So the government could play a huge role in simply taking that subsidy money and, uh, and, and switching it over to the small farmers who are growing organic farms. They should do that. I would compel them to do that, but I don't expect it because I am finding extreme resistance in the government. But individuals can make a huge difference one by one. Everybody who knows, go organic and tell everybody you know to go organic and explain why. And I think that uh, we can make a difference as individuals, grassroots, bottom-up, uh, faster, really, than it's going to happen through the government, I believe.